Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can get started working with queues in C Sharp and .NET with AWS SQS. Now this video will assume you know what queues are and you understand why you might need them and I'm going to solely focus on the code itself and make sure we set the right foundation there and also the portal and how we can create a queue and modify it. If you're interested in knowing what queue is and how it works, I have a video in the description down below. Now this video is sponsored by AWS and they're kind enough to give all of you $50 worth of credit in AWS as long as you sign up with the link down below and you put this text in the comments box or the description box that you see on that page. As always, the code for all the AWS sponsored videos can be found down below on the GitHub repo. If you like a type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe ring the notification bell and for more training, check out nickchapsters.com. All right, so I want to focus on three different things roughly in this video. The first one is creating the queue in the portal and showing you how you can do that very, very easily. It's that simple, actually. And then I'm going to show you how you can publish messages into the SQS queue and then how you can consume them. By the end of the video, you should have all the code you need to get started. All right, so I have an empty solution over here and no code at all but I want to focus on creating the queue first before I show you any code because we have to know what we're integrating with to write the code that integrates with it. So assuming you signed up for AWS by the link down below or your own account, you can go into the console and you can say SQS and you will see simple queue service. It is SQS. It's one of the first services. The name is... Anyway, simple queue service is what you need and you're just going to go ahead and say create queue. Now, there's two different types of queues you can select, as you can see. One is a standard and it guarantees at least once delivery and the message ordering isn't preserved. It means that you can push a message now and then another one later and the later one might be consumed before the first one. They're still going to do their best to keep the ordering, but it's not guaranteed and they will guarantee at least once delivery. The alternative is first in, first out or FIFO and message ordering is preserved. As you can understand, the preservation of ordering comes with limitations with things like throughput and how competing consumers work when you have multiple services reading from the same queue because you want to guarantee that the first thing that goes in is the first thing that goes out and you only have exactly once processing so the same message can be processed twice. Now, why you would choose one over the other largely depends on your architecture and how you have baked in item potency for your system. If you don't know what all these words are, don't worry. I'm planning to make a video on solution architecture and I will explain all that there but effectively we're gonna go with the standard queue for this video the code is still the same the thing that differs is how SQS on their end are dealing with messages and then we have a different consumption model depending on which one we choose so we're gonna go ahead and call this queue customers and this queue will be where I'm going to be publishing messages when my customer state changes. So customer was created, bam, a message in the queue with all the customer data that the consuming service might be interested in. Just to demonstrate this asynchronous transfer of data, it doesn't have to be a service to service. It can go to the queue. It can be processed at its own terms. And maybe that service is there for analytics for many different reasons. And then in terms of configuration, you have message retention. So for how long the message is retained in the queue, you have maximum message size. So 250 six kilobytes is the max one you have a delivery delay so you can delay the messages in the queue so they will be pushed to the consumers with a delay you can also specify that on a message to message basis so you can say i'm going to publish this message now but please consume it like five minutes or 10 minutes and this goes all the way up to 15 minutes and then visibility timeout is for how long a message is not visible to other consumers after it's been grabbed by one of the consumers. And then we have the access policy, which I won't focus too much in. I will make an I am video in the future. We're just gonna go with only the queue owner can read this, but if you want other accounts, other roles, other users to be able to deal with this queue, you would specify that here. And then you have things like a dead letter queue, which in SQS is actually a whole separate SQS queue, which if a message can be processed after an amount of times, in this case, 10, it will be pushed to that other queue for further analysis. We don't need that here, so we're just going to disable that and say create. And now we have the queue. Now, in this video, we're only going to focus on SQS. We will not talk about SQS. 
NS. Maybe in the future there will be a video for that. And as you can see, we have the option to send and receive messages. Now, messages almost always are just JSON blobs that you will send. So let's say a user was created with full name um, Nick Chapsus, you would publish a message that looks like this. Maybe you would have um, an ID field, and this is as far as I'm going to go for the example. Uh, but you can have all the information about the user here in a message as a JSON blob. And then you can have other message attributes, which are effectively metadata about this message that wouldn't go in the body, it would go in effectively the headers. And then we can also receive by polling for messages. And this is all in the console. Now that we have all that established, what I want to do is, now that I have my queue, I'm going to go ahead and start writing my code. I'm going to focus on the public first because it's significantly simpler and then we're going to take a look at the consumer so the first thing i want to do is create a new project and it's going to be a console application and i'm going to call that just publisher and i'm just going to do that here we go and i only need one dependency for this to work and that is the aws sdk sqs library and that's it once i have that i can start working with the queue now, first, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to need some contracts. So I'm going to say messages, my message contracts, the same way you would have API models or DTOs. This is effectively what they are. And I'm going to go ahead and create the first one, which is um, customer created. We usually uh, show a state, something happened, and I'm telling someone that, hey, a customer was created. So here's a class representing that. And then let's say just customer deleted. Let's keep the model thin so we can focus on the publishing and consuming code. So here I'm going to have two properties. First, I'm going to have an ID. And for demo purposes, just to make it easy for me to show, I'm going to use an integer. Realistically, you would be using a GUID. And I'm just going to say ID here. And then I'm going to have the full name. And these are the only two things I want to have. I don't want anything else. Uh, what I will do is say that this is init only and... Um, its default is not nullable, and then in it only for the int as well. Now, because I'm going to be serializing that data, I also want to add some JSON attributes. So JSON name or property name for this one is ID, just to make sure they're deterministic and they're no implicitly converted that can mess up with uh, serialization and deserialization. So now that we have that, I can go ahead and add it to the deleted one as well. And this is all we have in terms of models. Now I can go here and the first thing I need is an SQS client. And that is a new SQS, Amazon SQS client. Now, if you need an interface for that, you can use the iAmazon SQS interface. In this example, we don't need it. So I'm just gonna go with this. Um, and we don't really need settings, but if you wanna pass down settings, you can. The reason why I don't need them is because my machine is actually authenticated against AWS. In your real life service scenario, you would have to authenticate the service itself through IAM roles to be able to make those actions against the queue. Now, the SQS client gives us access to a bunch of different things. It's like everything you can do with a queue is here. However, I don't want to be working with that directly in my code. I want to wrap that and allow my developers to use a more focused um, API to work with this. So I will still have the client, but I'll make a class to wrap that and I'm going to call that SQS publisher. So this publisher will be the one that requires, let's say, private read only um, I Amazon SQS. And here's where the SQS client lives. I'm just going to say that. And then in here, I'm going to have a publish method. So I'm going to make a public async task uh, publish async. And for now, it's just going to be a method that accepts what we need, which is a queue name because we need to publish it somewhere and then we're going to have the object itself so we're going to have a generic t type parameter and say message here for now we're going to leave it like that we're going to change that in a second but for now just to show you how you can publish it it looks like this so the thing we're going to be working on is the publisher which is a new sqs publisher which requires a client and everyone is happy and the idea is that i can now say publisher dot uh, publish async and the queue for us is customers and then I want to have the object so my object here will be you know what let's do it in line so the object will be new and um, customer created and we're going to have a few properties so id will be one and then the full name will be 
Nick Jackson. So we're going to have something like that. So let's go ahead and work on the SQS publisher code. And it's actually pretty simple. Now, the SQS SDK for AWS is pretty low level. So you're going to see some things and wonder why it's designed that way. It could be definitely better, but I'm going to be explaining how you can optimize things as we go. So first, you can't directly use the queue name. You need to convert that queue name to what is a queue URL, which is the full canonical um, URL of the queue. So we need a queue URL, and that is equals SQS, which is a client, get queue URL async. And we just pass down the queue name, and we're going to get that URL. And now what I can say is request, and that request is a new send message request. And that accepts first the queue URL itself. So I'm going to say queue URL dot queue URL because that's a response actually. So the naming is a bit unfortunate on my end, but that's how we get the queue URL. And then we have the message body, which in our case would be just a JSON serializer dot serialize the message. And that's it. And then what I need to do is say await SQS dot send message async request. And that's it at its core. That's all there is to it. And just to prove it to you, I'm just going to go ahead and simply run this thing. And then we're going to go to the console and see this message being pushed. So this thing uh, executed. Let's go ahead and see what we have here. So I'm going to go customers, receive messages. And I'm going to poll for messages. And as you can see over here, I have this message being published, received count one. I can stop polling. And if I click in here, you will see the full body with the ID and the message name. That's it. That's how simple it is to push a message to the queue. Then you can have attributes if you want. In my case, don't have any. And then you have some other effectively system attributes that you might need to uh, worry about, like the MD5 hash of the message body to check for duplicates and stuff like that. Now, I'm going to just delete that message because I have to explicitly delete a message. Just consuming it doesn't mean it's deleted. It just means that it is visible just to that one consumer and then can be seen by other consumers as well. But my publishing is done. However, I don't want to just have anything be publishable. What I want to have is I want to have an interface, a nice message interface. And then in that interface, I can also add details that are useful for me. Because since I'm publishing a POCO, a plain old CLR object or C sharp object, I want to make sure that it can be serialized and deserialized and consumed appropriately by my system. So for that, I'm going to also have a property here, which will be ignored in the body, but I'm going to use it as a header, as a message attribute. And that will tell later my consumer, hey, this thing, this should be actually serialized to that specific model. And that way I can send it to a specific handler. This will all make sense. But for now, I'm just going to say message type name here. And this will be a getter only thing. And since it is here now, my classes will need to implement the I message interface and implement the type two. We don't need it in the JSON body. So I'm just going to say JSON ignore over here. And this will be the name of the actual class itself. So the name of customer created here and in the deleted, of course, I message again and do uh, one of these, but get it from here. So now in my publisher, I no longer just accept any T, I accept T message and T message has um, a limitation. It needs to be where T message implements I message and that's it which now means that I can go ahead here and I can set other attributes. Now, like I said before, we can delay a message for being receivable. You can uh, specify your own duplication ID if you manage your item potency yourself, but you can also specify message attributes. And this is a dictionary where you can just specify your attributes and you can say that name of I message dot message type name and then the value is and this might look a bit weird if you've never worked with um, SDKs by Amazon before but they have these data types and different uh, value settings in this case we have a string value and that's how we can specify that this is a message dot message type name and you still need to specify in the data type that this is a string once you do that watch what happens if I run the publisher again 
publisher run, I can go back to the portal. And if I pull for messages again, messages here, and if I go to attributes, now I have the message type here, which means I can go in my consumer. And when I consume the message, look at this and say, oh, this is a customer created object. I have this contract. I'm going to deserialize it to that and be able to work easily with C Sharp class in a very clean way. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that again. And now is where the very interesting thing comes into picture, which is the consumer. Now for the consumer, I'm going to go a bit differently. I'm not going to create a console app. I'm going to create um, an ASP.NET Core web application, but an empty one just to get an empty minimal API, basically. And I'm going to say consumer. You don't have to do that, but it makes it very easy to make a consumer that acts as a console app, but can also have this background service as well. And if you add monitoring and health checks as well, it makes it very convenient. So we're going to go ahead and create that. The consumer is made. And now the first thing I want to do is pull those messages from that publisher project over here to this one over here. Now, ideally, those messages would be extracted to a separate contract project, and that will be a new good package that your team shares and you all share the same contract. However, for this one, I'm just going to reuse the, the same files because it's just a demo. And we still use the exact same contract on the consuming side. Now, in terms of program.cs, I don't need this, but everything else looks good. And the main piece I need here is a background service that will do the processing. So I'm just going to say new class SQS consumer service. And that is going to extend the background service class, which allows me in ASP.NET Core to have, well, a background service. And once I do that, I can go to the program.cs over here and say builder.services.add hosted service SQS consumer service. And now this will start on application startup and start doing whatever I tell it to do here. Now, the first thing we need, like before, is the actual NuGet package. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. And we're going to register it in a dependency injection. So I'm going to say builder.services.add singleton. And in our case, uh, the I Amazon SQS thing will be a singleton. And I want to specify the region for it. So I'm going to say new Amazon SQS client, EU West 2. And that's it. And now what I want to do is in my SQS consumer service, I'm going to have the logic that consumes the messages, but then I'm going to write logic similar to how Mediator does it, where I will fan out or push out each individual message to its appropriate handler by type. Now, because of covariance and contravariance, I'm not going to do the super try hard, absolute insane method. I'm going to do a very conventional, simpler method, which has a few minor flaws, but it's still very usable. I will raise those flaws as I go. Right, so in the SQS consumer service over here, I'm going to say private read only, I Amazon SQS, and I'm going to dependency inject that in here. And then like before, the first thing I need is a Q URL. So I'm going to say SQS dot get Q URL async, and I'm going to get that actually. And you could inject that from configuration, so you could actually have it in here and you should have it in here and map it to an object and inject it in this class for simplicity purposes i'm just going to store it in a constant here but you can load it um, as a service if you want so private const string um, q name equals and we're just going to say customers over here that's not how you spell it customers that's how you did and we're going to pass it down here and we're also going to pass down the cancellation token which i'm just going to call ct4 screen width reasons. And now what I need to do like before, because everything in these low level SDKs are requests and responses, is I need to create effectively a consume request. It's called the receive request. So that's going to be a new receive message request. And that accepts a few things. First, we have the queue URL, which is the thing we just got um, and it needs to be awaited. So uh, here we go. So that's going to be async. So Q URL here, then we can specify a few of other things. For example, visibility timeout. The interesting one is the max number of messages you ask to receive in a single request. There's limits to those. You can't just say a billion, um, but you can set that here. But the interesting thing is that you can ask for specific attribute names or message attribute names. So you can say that I only want the message type name attribute. Now, just to make this super generic, I'm going to actually say that I want all the attributes there are, but 
for bandwidth reasons and obviously performance, you can say that I don't want all the attributes or none of the attributes of the message. But I'm going to ask for all of them now because they are represented in a list of strings and each name of the attribute represents the thing you want. Um, it would look something like this. So you would say um, message type name, for example, here, and this would indicate from the SDK to the service that give me also this um, attribute. However, we want all of them. So I'm going to say all here, or you could have a star. Both of them would work. And because I'm going to do the same for attribute names too, just so I don't allocate the same uh, list twice on every single request, I'm just going to extract that in a separate field up here and reuse it. So I'm going to do that here and that here. And that's it. And now I have my receive request. Now, because that request only needs to be instantiated once, I can just keep it here and keep reusing it. And I'm going to actually just extract it in a separate method once I start using it. Now, the way I want this to work with a background service is say that while the cancellation token is not cancellation requested, then stay in that loop and keep processing and consuming messages. So since we have uh, a receive request, we want to get the response and let's call that message response actually. And that's going to be await SQS receive message async. And we're going to pass down that receive request and that cancellation token because yes. Now, first and foremost, we want to check for the status code of this response because it can be an unsuccessful result and you might not want to process that. So we have the HTTP status code. So if this is not OK, then I'm going to say continue here. But for you getting the code, do some logging or handling, whatever you want. It's completely up to you. And in my case, I'm just going to skip it. Realistically, you would investigate why this happened. And then if it is OK, it has a list of messages in the response. So message response dot messages. And I'm going to say message here. And this is where we process each message. Now, before I write any fancy stuff, all I'm going to do is do a console dot write line. And the message is just a message with attributes, a body, message ID and receipt handle, which is useful. I'm going to explain what it is in a second. So it has all the details about the message in that object. Now I'm just going to print the body over here. And once I print it, I want this message to disappear because I handled it and I don't want to be reprocessed again. So I'm going to use the client and say delete message async. And I'm going to pass down the QURL and the receipt handle. I could create a delete message request as well, but I don't need the full object. I'm just going to say QURL.QURL, um, message.receipt handle. Um, and that's it. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say await here. I'm just going to pass the cancellation token as well. And that's it. And you know what? Let's go ahead and run this. So I'm going to run this in the background. And hopefully by the time I execute, this is all, all works fine. I'm going to run the publisher, which still publishes um, a message in the queue. Let's run it. And on the other end, as you can see over here, we received our message and we processed it. And if I run it again, I should see it again. Here you go. It's being successfully pushed to the queue and consumed. However, it is not nice that we just consume any message here, like how do you do message specific handling? How do you treat the customer created or the customer deleted or the customer updated? You wouldn't just have a if this do, do this, if this do this or like a big switch. We want a nicer way to handle this. I'm going to show you how you can do that right now. And the biggest advantage of that approach is that since this is effectively a console app in this approach, you don't even have a scope. So if you want to resolve scoped services in a specific scope, which in this case would be the processing of one individual message, you can't have that. It's not like a controller scope where it's the lifetime of the request. So I'm going to show you how you can recreate that as well. Now, the core idea is actually pretty simple. We're going to create handlers. Those will be message handlers. So I'm going to create a handlers folder and I'm going to say that under the new interface, I message handler interface. Now, when we're designing systems like this handler with generics that map to objects, we have a big problem with C sharps, generics and covariance and contravariance. I'm not going to go deep into that. I'm not going to touch on it at all. I'm going to show you a workaround which works just as fine, but it might be a bit more error prone on the developer, not on the runtime. The runtime will be absolutely fine, 
but you have to be careful when you create your handlers. So the appropriate way would be that we have again a team message and each handler is processing that generic, but it's very tricky to do. So instead, I'm just going to say that this interface will have a public task called handle async and that handles an I message, that same contract that we're publishing. And then we also have a public static abstract. This is a C sharp 10 preview feature or C sharp 11 feature. So you might need to enable preview features if you want to use that and then specify the type and say message type over here and only make it available through a getter. And now with that, I can go ahead and implement my handlers. So I need two for this example. The first is a customer created handler, which implements that I message handler interface. We implement the members. The one we have to implement is the message type. Now I won't go with the Lambda expression because I want the type of to effectively be cached in the backing field. So I'm just going to say type of over here and the customer created. And this is where this could technically go wrong because you have to explicitly specify the type here, which needs to match the handler. And also it needs to match the, the value here. So customer created equals hard cast to the customer created message. But this is a significantly simpler approach compared to the alternative, which is bonkers. Maybe if you want to see it in the future, put a comment down below and I might do it. But this will be good enough and perform very, very well. Now, all I'm going to say here is actually log the full name of the user. So I'm going to say private read only iLogger just to show you that um, dependency injection actually just works absolutely fine. So I have the logger and I will say logger dot log information and say customer created with name and then have the full name. Let's have some structured logging and then customer created actually dot uh, full name. Let's new line this. Here we go. And then simply return task dot uh, complete the task because we're not awaiting anything. Realistically, you might be calling a database or anything. You can do that all here. And then the other handler we need is the deleted just to show you the differentiation between the two. So customer uh, deleted handler. Here we go. And there will be an I message handler. Again, same thing. We have to specify the type of the customer deleted object and we're going to have to cast it again. This will look pretty much the same here. So let's just copy a few things as we're grabbing the logger and replacing it here and here. And then we have the implementation. Let's just copy all that paste here. Customer deleted with ID and just say ID here is customer uh, deleted, not created. So rename that to deleted and say ID. And now I have my two handlers, but I need to build a mechanism that processes the message, checks the attribute, deserializes that to the right type, and then pushes it to the right handler with the right scope. So a lot of interesting stuff here. Now to deal with all that logic, I'm going to write a specific class and I'm going to call that message dispatcher. You can call it whatever you want. The purpose of this class is to take a message that we need processed and know where to push it on which handler with the right uh, scope lifetime. Now for the lifetime handling, we're going to need a private read only I service scope factory. And this will allow us to create the right uh, scope for our processing of the messages. We will also need two dictionaries, one and let's say private read only dictionary string and then type will be responsible for all the type mappings. So effectively, and I'm just going to do it um, here for now, and then we're going to auto generate it. But to begin with, this will look something like this. We will say, for example, that name of customer created maps to the type customer created. The reason why we do that is you're going to see, we're going to need that to be able to identify from the name that is in the header to a type. So customer deleted and customer deleted here. You won't have to manually change this. I'm going to show you a way to auto generate it on startup. But for now, we're dealing with this. And the other thing we need is the actual handling mapping. Effectively, you have the name of the message. So customer created or customer deleted. And then you need to have a function that accepts the service provider and returns a handler with the right lifetime to process this message. So to store that, I'm going to say private read only dictionary string and then a function that 
accepts a service provider, in fact, an I service provider, and returns an I message handler. So I'm just going to say handlers over here, and this will be a new dictionary again. Again, don't worry about this. We're going to auto generate this, but just to show you how it is in its raw form, this is again one of these. So name of over here, and then we have the service provider provider dot get required service. And in this case, it is the a customer created handler from the service and then another one of these with the deleted so customer deleted and customer deleted service so now that we have that let's implement the only method this thing needs and that is a public async task dispatch async and this will accept a generic t message over here which will have the right constraint so t message message where t message is an i message and now we're going to create the scope so using var scope equals scope factory dot create scope then var handler equals handlers and then from the message we're going to grab the message type name and we're going to invoke that with the scope dot service provider which is scope to this specific processing the scope is basically this one over here and then in the end all we're going to do is say await handler dot handle async and pass down the message and that's it for this class now that we have that we're going to inject it in the consumer service because that's what's processing the messages in the first place so private read only message dispatcher i'm just going to say dispatcher here and let's change the logic here because we need to add a few more things first and foremost we need to make sure that we're processing messages that have this header the message type name attribute to make sure that we can actually handle this some way so var message type name equals to message dot message attributes dot get value or default and then we need the name of i message dot message type name uh, and we need the string value it should be a string value so dot string value here and now if message type is null meaning it's just not there then continue this is where you maybe would log something to know that hey i process something without an attribute that indicates the message type maybe something is wrong because how did this thing make it here then we actually need to make sure that there is a handler for this specific type that there is mapping there so for that we're going to go back to the dispatcher and actually the way we are building this i think we don't even need this because the only thing we need to do is a key check on the handlers since we're working with the name so i'm going to delete that and say public bool can handle message type and it accepts the message type name over here and all i need to do is say return handlers dot contains key message type name and that's it so we don't even need the mapping because we go directly from name to handler so we're gonna take that away and go back here and say if dispatcher dot can handle message type so if it cannot then again continue and maybe log it somehow you are dealing with a message that you cannot consume or deal with and now i can actually deserialize the thing as the types actually thinking about this we are going to need that other dictionary because we will need the type for the deserialization so i'm going to keep this over here and just update everything that still stays the same but i'm going to add a second method over here which will be a public type and i'm going to call that get message type by name string message type name over here now technically this can be nullable because it might not exist even though we have the check above so i'm going to say message mappings so here we go dot get value or default message type name here we go and now with that because this check has passed i can say var message type equals uh, dispatcher dot get message type by name message type name goes here i know this is not null so exclamation mark and then get the message as each i message type and say this is i message and use the json serializer dot deserialize without the generic because i want to pass down the message dot body and then message type and this will not be null so i'm getting the message as an i message and this means i can delete this console write line and say dispatcher dot dispatch async the message type async here we go and once this is processed i can delete it which means that now i can go ahead and stick breakpoints both to the delete and the uh, created over here 
and I'm going to go to the publisher again and add a five second delay. So task dot delay for five seconds and then publish the customer deleted one over here just to show you the differentiation. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and run the consumer. In fact, debug the consumer first and then go ahead and run the publisher. So, oh, and this is failing because we didn't actually register, well, anything, not the handlers and not the dispatcher. So let's go here and say builder.services.add and the message dispatcher will be a singleton, but the handlers themselves will be scoped. So add scoped a customer created handler over here and then customer deleted handler over here. Here we go. So if I run this, again now that my service is running and if i go ahead and i run the publisher which will publish a created message first and five seconds later a deleted we should be able to see the handling being separated in the two services so as you can see i'm handling the customer created first i f5 waiting and as you can see later customer deleted so we have this finding out here's a message for you here's a message for you type of logic on individual handlers, which can deal with different types in a very nice way. Now I could wrap it up here. However, I do not like that I have to manually create this dictionary, this dictionary, and also this registration over here. So I'm going to show you how you can automatically generate them on startup with reflection, which doesn't affect our performance at all just a startup performance by nanoseconds or microseconds. So don't even worry about this. I'm going to close all of them and go to my message dispatcher. So what I don't want to do is I don't want to have to manually create uh, this dictionary over here. And then I don't want to have to manually create the handlers dictionary over here. For starters, now we're going to go to the dependency injection. So what I want is to get the name of everything that implements iMessage and register that in that dictionary and do the same with the handler, but a bit more elaborate because I also need to specify the actual handling. So the message mapping should look something like this. I will say message mappings equals assembly dot get uh, executing assembly. Now you could use a type of and use an assembly marker if you want to. Uh, you can do that by doing type um, of and then specifying, let's say the program.cs. So program and then say dot assembly. This will also work because the uh, program is located within your assembly, but I'm going to go with the assembly dot get executing assembly and I'm going to say defined type. So all the defined types in that assembly where, and I need to say that type of I message is assignable from my X type. And I also want to make sure that this is not an interface, so is interface, and that this is also not um, abstract because I need them to be instantiatable basically. And then all I want to say is to dictionary, and on the first one I have info dot name, so the type name, and on the second one I have info dot info as type. And this will build the exact same array. If I go ahead, uh, sorry, dictionary, and if I go ahead and debug this just to show you the the building. Um, as it comes in here, there is nothing, it is null, but as I step over this, you can see that I have the exact same thing, but on startup. So customer deleted with its type and then customer created with its type, everything absolutely working fine. Now, the other thing I need is to generate the handlers. So the handlers will use pretty much the same logic, but for the handlers. So handlers equals, and I'm going to copy the first two lines, which could be the same over here, but instead of I message, I message handler and I'm going to say to dictionary but because I can't really infer the types of the uh, function over here unless I uh, cast it or create a new func I will say that this dictionary will be incoming thing is type info and then first thing is a string and then the second thing is a function that accepts an i service provider and returns an i message handler so let's do the handling here. First, what I need to get from the handler is this static value, the message type static value. So I need to say info dot get property, and that is the name of just to make sure it's more safe. I message handler dot message type, and I want to get its value but because it's not an instance; it is just a static member. I can just say null here, and then I'm just going to hard cast the whole thing to a type, and that will give me the type. And from the type, I need the name, but I have 
to hard cast this to a type because it can't uh, automatically defer from an object what this is. So I'm going to say name here and that's it. Um, and also suppress this. This is not null. No, no, this is null. Fine. And then the second thing is way simpler. All I have is the incoming provider and then the provider will return from a get required service the service for that type. So info dot as type the type is the actual handler itself and i'm just going to cast this as an i message handler over here and that's it and now if i put a breakpoint here as well then as you can see when i step over this i have my two handlers with the right message and the right handler you should be able to see both of them here and in fact if i just let it run as it is uh, my consumer is running so i'm gonna go ahead and run the publisher so publisher is running and as you can see, I'm hitting the breakpoints. Let's see if I hit the deleted as well. I didn't hit the break. Did I delete the breakpoint? I did delete the breakpoint. So it actually did run. Let's run it again, just for sanity's sake. So created first, fine, three, two, one, deleted. Here we go. So we have deleted as well. So everything works absolutely fine. Now, the last thing I need to do, and again, it falls under the same principle. So I'm just going to copy all that, is make an extension method and call it add handlers so I can actually add all the handling and the plumbing for my service. So I could wrap everything in this, but I'm just going to make one to wrap this type of logic over here. So I'm going to create a new class and say handler extensions, and I'm going to make that a static class and say public static I service collection add message handlers. And you can also pass a lifetime if you want. So service lifetime. Now, I'm going to leave it as code, but you can change it. I'm going to show you how you can change it. So add message handlers. And the way this will work is we're going to get all the handlers. So we're doing that using, well, this. So handlers are here. This is the same code we had in the message dispatcher handlers. And I can iterate over them. So I can say for each handler in handlers, this is an extension method on the I service collection. So services, and I can say services dot add and in my case this will be scoped but i can also say add and create a service descriptor and in that service descriptor i can specify the handler type so handler type equals handler dot as type so push that down here and the implementation is the actual type and then you can specify the lifetime over here so in my case it is scoped so that's one way you can actually um, change the service lifetime and make the parameter if you want to or if you don't want to have to deal with any of that you can simply say services.add scoped and pass down the handler type and be done with it so we have the extension why don't you like this did i accidentally comment anything oh i did not return the services back so here we go services are returned back and now i don't need any of this all i need is to say builder.services.add message handlers and that way let's go in here and stick a breakpoint and see what happens when i run this here we go so we're gonna grab all the handlers it found well it will find two handlers as you can see the customer created and the deleted then it iterates um, over the handlers it gets the type so customer created customer deleted it adds them so it's going to work for any amount of handlers as you add more for your messages and then we can go ahead in the publisher and all the publishing would still work so created works fine and then four three two one deleted i think we hit the breakpoint didn't we i removed it again uh, deleting works fine as well and that's it now you have all the code you need to get started work with queues in a very nice way that separates a specific handler for a specific message and you can customize that any way you want again all the code for that is in the description down below and you can get 50 dollars worth of credit if you use a link in the description with the text next to the link well that's all i had for you for this video thank you very much for watching special thanks to my patreons for making this possible if you want to support me as well you're going to find a link in the description down below leave a like if you like this video subscribe more to like this ring the bell as well and i'll see you in the next video keep coding